Hey, this is Pastor Bungie Garrett, and I want to take this opportunity to present you with another word of encouragement. Now, as we continue to consider the state of our nation, there should be no doubt in our minds that we find ourselves living in the days that Paul described in Ephesians chapter 4. There he describes those who are given over to lewdness in order to work all uncleanness with greediness, because their understanding has been darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of their ignorance that's within them, because of the blindness of their heart. Wow, that's quite the description. And in order to, to show you why I think that this is actually being fulfilled here in this day and age, I want to consider a few of the headlines that caught my attention this morning. You know, I wasn't surprised to learn that Britain is now running low on monkeypox vaccine doses. And the main reason why is because of the increased demand after Brighton's 30th Pride Parade. Now listen, this is the same city that fined a bunch of people for breaking their COVID lockdown measures, you know, because they were all about protecting people. And yet, in the face of a monkeypox outbreak, they decided to go ahead with this pride parade. And now they don't have enough monkeypox vaccines. And, and listen, I also just learned that a dog has now been infected with monkeypox for the first time ever. And according to the report, you know, this happened after the dog's owners were tested positive themselves for monkeypox. As a matter of fact, you know, this four-year-old male Italian greyhound began to develop lesions and pustules on its stomach, and this occurred after it slept in the same bed as the two gay men who share an apartment there in Paris. And you have to admit that this is really rough for that dog. That's horrible. Meanwhile, back in America, you know, it was just earlier this month when the U.S. military decided to host a drag show. You should know that this event, which took place at, at, the, at the U.S. military's joint base in Langley, Eustis, uh, this event was promoted by organizers as a kid-friendly get-together. That's right, they actually encouraged parents to bring their kids to this highly sexualized event by advertising that there would be bouncy houses and face painting for the children. Oh yeah, and then there's the dudes dressed in drag as well, you know, yeah, because the kids love that. Now, if that's not crazy enough for you, then consider what Nancy Pelosi just said about the Inflation Reduction Act. You know, after expressing her disappointment about the Republicans who refused to vote for the Inflation Reduction Act, she went on uh, to insist, and I quote, she asked, how can they vote against the planet, Mother Earth? Mother Earth gets angry from time to time, and this legislation will help us address all of that. Ah, okay, gotcha. The Inflation Reduction Act is supposed to solve the inflation problem by, you know, printing a bunch more money while uh, simultaneously then appeasing Mother Earth because Mother Earth is angry with Americans who haven't yet decided to drive, you know, electric vehicles which are charged with electricity from, you know, power plants. That's right. Nancy Pelosi is certain that uh, angry Mother Earth will finally be appeased by the passing of this bill. Just incredible. There's a New York Times economic economist named Paul Krugman, uh, who has also shared a similar sentiment by celebrating the Democrat senators for saving civilization. That's the way he puts it. This is saving civilization from an eco disaster, you know, with this $740 billion Inflation Reduction Act. Here's how he put it, and I quote him They really did it. This is a very big deal. The act isn't by itself enough to avert climate disaster but it is a huge step in the right direction and sets the stage for more action in the years ahead. Well, as we consider his excitement, it's sad to say that, uh, you know, this money's not going to solve Biden inflation, nor will it save us from the boogeyman of, uh, of a climate disaster that, you know, the climatologists have been promising since the 70s when they told us that we're all headed for another ice age. Well, listen, rather than admitting that they've been wrong about the uh, climate crisis time after time again, the climate scientists keep pushing the date out, pushing it out in order to protect their political agenda. For example, you know, those uh, who were assuring us that we were headed for a mega drought uh, are now assuring us that, no, 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 we're actually headed for a mega flood. Oh, okay. 
But not because of, you know, the melting polar ice caps, which we were warned about, uh, you know, just like, you know, 40 years ago. But, but no, no, the, the, they're actually uh, concerned uh, about the, the rains that are coming caused by climate change. According to one new study, climate change has already doubled the chances of a disastrous flood happening in California. And according to their research, this flood will occur in the next four decades, resulting in massive devastation with damages costing more than $1 trillion. So just a little bit more than you know what what the what was uh, paid out for the mostly peaceful protests of 2020 but never mind the fact that meteorologists struggle to guess tomorrow's weather we're supposed to believe that climate scientists can tell us what's going to happen with the weather in the next 40 years and we should just trust them regardless of how often you know they've been wrong not only that, but now they're assuring us that the climate change uh, crisis is to blame for the childhood obesity issue. That's right. According to one study, children today are 30% less aerobically fit than their parents. And if you're wondering, you know, uh, why, well, it's, it's because of global warming. That's right. <laughs> the study here is attempting to prove to us that hotter temperatures are preventing kids from playing outside and getting, getting, you know, daily exercise. Never mind the fact that they're all just really sitting in their rooms with their face buried in their smartphone. Uh, and, and with that being the case, you know, I have no doubt that, you know, the childhood obesity is, is largely, uh, you know, not, not because of, of the hot temperatures outside, but rather because kids are just, you know, fully focused on their smartphones. You know, there was even a Harvard study back in 2016, which uh, confirms this, and it revealed the connection between smartphones and tablet use or or, or the use of computers and, and all of this, uh, you know, correlating uh, to an increasing obesity problem among teens. According to the study, teens who spend hours a day on smartphones, tablets, or computers may be more likely to become obese than those who don't spend as much time on these electronic devices. But never mind the facts. Never mind the facts. Let's, let's just blame global warming because we wouldn't want our kids to disconnect from their brainwashing device. Uh, meanwhile, the World Economic Forum is calling for artificial intelligence monitor in, uh, monitoring of, of disinformation and hate speech, you know, in order to protect the world from, from anything that they deem to be disinformation or extremism or fraud. And, and here's how the author of this article put it, and I quote, by bringing human curated multi-language off-platform intelligence into learning sets, AI will then be able to detect nuanced novel abuses at scale before they reach mainstream platforms, supplementing this smarter automated detection with human expertise to review edge cases and identify false positives and negatives and then feeding those findings back into training sets will allow us to create AI with human intelligence baked in. Man, I could use some ranch with that word salad. <laughs> but seriously, you know, they want to create an artificial intelligence system which they think will stop any post deemed to be bad before it can ever reach the mainstream uh, of that platform. And, 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 you know, speaking of this sort of AI, well, Mark Zuckerberg recently went live on Meta with their Blender Bot 3 AI chatbot. And how did that go? Well, it didn't take long for the Meta Blender bot to start saying things that could have gotten a, 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 the average person banned from the platform. And listen, this isn't the first time that an AI chatbot rollout went bad. For example, it was last July when the Google AI chatbot called Lambda, uh, it began to internalize biases and mirror hate speech or, or uh, repeat misleading information and, and saying things that they didn't want it to say. And, and it was back in 2016 also when a Microsoft chatbot called Tay uh, was taken offline after it started praising a a Adolf Hitler. Microsoft then had to issue an apology for uh, for the uh, all of the racist and sexist tweets posted by their uh, AI chatbot. Then there's the AI uh, bot named Delphi created by the Allen Institute. And while this AI bot was designed to answer ethical questions. Well, it began to learn from loads of internet sources, which included Reddit pages, as well as crowdsourcing platform called, uh, called uh, Mechanical Turk. And, and as it began to learn more and more from the internet, uh, well, as you might expect, the, the system started learning, you know, all of the unethical things that, that people believe. And, and now it gives all sorts of wrong advice to ethical questions. 
And this really shouldn't come as a, as a surprise because listen, if these AI bots are learning from those who have given themselves over to lewdness and uncleanness and greediness, well, then we should expect them to also become similar. You know, as they learn from sinners, they start, you know, uh, kicking out information that is sinful. Sadly, our kids are learning about life from the same exact internet. And listen, if the internet is able to corrupt the systems of these AI bots, well, then you better believe that the kids who are given unrestricted access to the internet, well, they're also likely to embrace the unethical and immoral beliefs that they learn online. And with that being the case, I just encourage every parent, maintain a close watch on what your kids are doing online. Not only that, but I also encourage you to remember that the Lord is calling every parent to train up their kids according to the truth of God's word, so that they might develop a biblically-based worldview and, and, and then you know, move forward in a biblically-based morality. In this way, we'll help them to embrace the Lord Jesus Christ. And as they do, the Lord will help them to fight the good fight of faith and all for the glory of God.